Hey there, welcome back to my channel. My name's Amber and in today's video, I have four DIY projects that I totally think you're gonna love. They're super stinking cute. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to my channel, turn on the bell, leave me a comment down below and give me a thumbs up and be sure to share this with someone. I think you're totally gonna love it and I hope that it inspires somebody. So without further ado, are you ready to get started? All right, let's go. Hey guys, let's get started with our very first project. So I took some candle holders from the Dollar Tree and I put them in a box that I had. And I am going to be spray painting inside. I do recommend that you do it outside, but for the purpose of this video, I did do it indoors. It wasn't near as bad, I did have a fan on, but I'm using this matte spray paint and I will link everything in the description below. I did use a pair of gloves and I only put one on one hand just so that I could pick up and spray. And you're gonna coat the candle holders with this paint. Um, one coat is basically all I did, and I just spot sprayed after they dried wherever it needed. So go ahead and spray all your candle holders, and then I did set these aside to dry uh, while I finished working on the rest of this project. So I picked these little um, cups up at Kroger, my local Kroger. They're like tart dishes, but I figured, heck, why can't we use these for a craft? So I took some black paint and I just coated it with one coat and it is a multi-purpose paint. And it was kind of wanting to stick but not stick to this material. I probably should have coated this with some sort of bonder, but I didn't. But in the end, I liked how it started to peel up a little bit when I added the white paint. So just give it one coat and then set them aside to dry. And then we're gonna add our Wise Owl Snow Owl over the top of this. Okay, I have a cobalt heat gun and it is corded. It is adjustable temperature, but I will link up one that's an alternative below because they don't actually make this heat gun anymore, but I use it on the low setting in the temperature 120, so it's not really hot, it's just drying. All right, now we're going to coat these with one coat of this Wise Owl Snow Owl. It's a chalk paint. And again, I just did one coat. I just kind of did it random. I painted all the edges. I kind of let some of the black show through. But as I was painting it, uh, some of the paint, the black paint was lifting up and it wasn't sticking all the way. But in the end, the paint did end up sticking once it was completely dry. But you can kind of see that's one side. So I painted the other underside. Then I dried it and then I flipped it over and did the inside. That was the best way to do it so that it could, did not stick to my paper. And then just go around and coat it with the one coat of paint. And right here where I started to swirl and go around, I started to have some lifting and you could see the yellow peeking through, which I kind of thought was very cool. It, it looked really old. So if you can find these at your local Kroger, you should totally pick them up. I want to say it was like three bucks for the two pack. Super cool. And I absolutely loved how these turned out. So once you're done with your first coat and both of your dishes are dry, just let them set. And then we're going to take uh, some tissue paper that I had. I needed to trace the inside of these tart dishes so that I could put my scrapbook paper inside. So I just took a piece of tissue paper and I took a pen and I just kind of traced around the inside of the tart dish. And the reason I use this tissue paper is because it was able to be flexible enough to get inside the opening. And then I just cut it out and used it as a stencil and laid it over the top of my scrapbook paper and traced it. Now I'm using this mini buffalo check because the pattern fit better in the smaller area than the larger buffalo check. 
and these I'm actually making to go in my bathroom because I'm doing a black and white theme so I thought this would be perfect so once you get it traced cut out your circle and then do a second one All right, now that you have your two circles cut, we're gonna use some Mod Podge. And again, make sure that your dishes are dry because you want your Mod Podge to stick to the dried paint. And I just coated these circles and laid them inside and just kind of swirled around. And then I did the second one. And then I did end up clear coating the top of these because I am going to be putting a candle on them, so I figured if the wax was to set on the paper, it might discolor it. So I went ahead and coated the um, paper just in case, you know, just to protect it. Now that you've coated them with the Mod Podge, just use your heat gun in the 120 setting on low, the low speed and dry the Mod Podge. Now I took these candle bases out of the box after they were done drying and I just saw a couple areas where I could kind of still see the glass so I just kind of spot sprayed those sections and then it took just about five minutes to dry. So once those were dry, I took my uh, tart dishes and I set them there and I just wanted to show you that the Mod Podge is now completely dry and we're ready to start with our candlesticks. So we're gonna use the same paint, the Wise Owl Snow Owl. It, the Snow Owl is the color and you're gonna cover your candle bases with just a light dry kind of see-through coat. It's You're not gonna do like solid coverage. And I ended up, di I didn't end up sanding these down so I, just wanted them to kind of look very organic and just kind of old somewhat to match the dishes even though they weren't the same so coat all three of your candlesticks and then let them dry and then we're going to start gluing all the things together now i am using the e6000 and it is the white i wish i would have gotten the clear but the white is okay and once your candle bases are dry just make sure that there's no wet paint for when you go to add your E6000. And I'm going to also do a combination of E6000 with hot glue to try to like help the bond connect. It speeds up workability, so you don't want it to be sliding all around while you're still working with this. So the hot glue helps to give it a little bit of a bond, but I do recommend that you let the E6000 and the hot glue bond together. Um, set on your project for at least 24 hours to make sure that it is solid. Now I did have some seeping through of the glue and the E6000. I just took a baby wipe and I just kind of dabbed in certain areas. Be very careful because it can actually come apart still. And then I glued the bottom part of the candle base. So I glued them end to end or top to top so that I could create this higher tiered uh, candle holder. So yeah, just kind of twist it around and then make sure that it's kind of bonded. And then I just went around wherever there was some stuff that came off and I just kind of touched it up with my paintbrush. And then we're going to do the exact same thing for the shorter one, except we're not using two candle bases. We're just going to use the one. And then I doubled up on the glue and the E6000 on this so that it kind of, when I put it upside down, will kind of run into the bottom of the tart dish so that it would stick better. And then just wipe off any extra. And there you have it. Aren't those super stinking cute? So candle bases from the Dollar Tree and tart dishes from Kroger. And I do have a Kroger Marketplace, so check your stores and see if they have them. All right, are you ready for the next project? Here we go. All 
All right, this one's gonna be super cute. Very simple, not really a lot of things involved. It's just some layering. So I'm using this Beautiful Life um, frame with a print in it from Dollar Tree. I'm using this Buffalo Check Shadow Box. It's just a deep box, it's raised. It had this frame on it, and as soon as I touched the frame, it immediately came off. Now, I will tell you, I had a little bit of a problem with this. And I'll be honest, it is Dollar Tree. It was a dollar, it was super cute. But I really loved this frame and I thought I needed to do something with it. So I started by sanding off this really weird white film and I decided, you know, it was kind of shiny. So I took some of the Wise Owl Snow Owl and I just kind of lightly dusted over it to take away some of that shine. It kind of looked glossy and I just set it aside to dry. Now I did pick up this home sign from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to dismantle this. Now I already went ahead and dismantled one but I figured I should probably show you how I did it. So I took a paint scraper or a putty knife and a hammer and I do apologize if the camera is shaking in the video but it was the only way to show you guys how I did this. So I just took it and I just kind of pried it apart gently on each side. So once you do the full side flip it over and do the other side and do the exact same thing. Go line by line, letter by letter, and use your hammer and just start separating and creating like a wedge in between. And just be careful when you're pulling and prying because you can actually snap the wood. And once you get it separated, you're gonna be able to just kind of pry it a little bit and it's gonna pop right out. And everything is completely intact and you have a home sign. And then anywhere there was any extra like sh shards of wood, that was attached, just go ahead and scrape them off. I did use a sand, sanding sponge to kind of just smooth it out. But um, nevertheless, it actually was, nothing was torn or broken or chipped. And then the inside, it's like a groove. And I wanted to show you like, I did two of them the same and they did crack. So be really careful if you do try this project. Now where the frame, the white frame was glued to the top of this. I went ahead and just scraped off all the extra glue that really wasn't holding it. And then I just sanded it smooth because I am going to recover it with scrapbook paper. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I thought I could just put a piece of Buffalo check over the words that were on the front, but they were completely off centered. It was not even squared. It was not on center at all. And it was okay. So I had this extra scrapbook paper laying around and I just traced the box and we're just going to recover the front of it. We're not even going to cover the sides because the sides of the print on the box were actually okay. And I think it turned out really cute in the end doing the two different patterns. Like I thought it was just really fun. So you're going to use Mod Podge and you're going to coat the entire top of this square. And you can kind of see looking at it like the words are like the print is so off centered. But make sure you have a really good bit of Mod Podge on here because you don't want your paper to lift up. So coat it really good and then place your paper. And then I have this really fun trick that I do when I scrap, when I use like Mod Podge and scrapbook paper is I use a rolling pin to kind of smooth out my paper and push the glue out so I don't have so much excess. And then it just makes sure that my paper lays completely smooth. And then just push out your edges, make sure that your sides are good. And I loved how the sides of this looked with the Buffalo check combination with the other print on the top. I thought it was so fun. So now that that is dry, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to, well, obviously you need to dry it, but the next thing we're gonna do is add our frame over the top. Now, I ran into a problem yet again. So this white frame, I was like, what is up? This side is way longer. So I was like, okay, let's dismantle this and let's shim it down because we did not want to put our project together looking all uneven. So it was really easy to take the staples out and I just used some snips and I'll link them below. I use aviation snips from Lowe's. Now you can see how much of a difference, like it's not even squared. <laughs> so I had to square this up completely and restaple it, but it wasn't that hard. I just lined it up, marked it and made it even with the other side so that I got a square rectangle. Well, I got a squared rectangle and I just used those aviation snips. And like I said, they're, I think they're craftsmen and I got them at Lowe's. I want to say like 20 bucks, but um, I'll link, give you a link to them. I always get questions about those when um, I do videos, but they are really good. 
So now that we've trimmed it up and we've got our rectangle square back up again, just restaple your corners. And where I did cut it, I had to do some repairs. So what I decided to do was just use some hot glue to fill in the gaps and then just paint over it. I didn't have any wood putty on hand, so hot glue was the next best thing. So just I just filled it in, and if you happen to get the same sign and have the same problem with your double, like the frame that's on the box, this was my easy way to fix it. So just go ahead and give it a coat of paint, let it dry, sand it down, and then I had a little bit of the staples sticking up so I didn't have to hammer them down, but it ended up being really cute and it looked way better than it did being off-centered. All right, now here you can see how it looks so much better. It's way more centered and squared. And then all I'm gonna do is take my Sherbonder hot glue gun using my Gorilla Glue, and I'm just gonna glue it right over the top. And then we're going to put the home sign right over the top inside that frame. And I didn't do anything to it, I just left it natural. It very much goes with my own home decor, but I thought this was so super neutral and just adorable. So for about three bucks, plus the scrapbook paper, we have totally transformed this project using a white frame that's rectangled, a box that had a sign on it, and a home sign. And I just uh, took out the glass and flipped over the print, which you could totally save the print if you wanted to reuse it on something else. I just went ahead and glued it down. And uh, I did not keep the glass in. I took the glass completely out. And then I just used some hot glue and attached this uh, print to the back upside down. And then you're gonna put it back in the frame. And I did glue my cardboard in uh, I was like, I should probably glue this in. So I glued the four corners and then just put my cardboard back in with the print facing the cardboard. And so it was just a solid white paper on the front side. And then once we were done, we flipped it over and then I just glued completely around the edges of this box and then glued it to the inside of this frame on the white paper. And it just created a really cool look that I thought this is just, you know, it's got some dimension. It's not so flat. It's just, it's really cool. But I think it turned out great. I hope you were inspired by this. I hope you love it as much as I do. We're going to get right into the next project. Okay, you guys, this one has to be my total favorite of all four of these projects this go around. So I found these napkins at Home Goods, and I was like, lemon wreath, heck yeah. And when I opened it up, I was like, there's six wreaths. This is crazy. Uh, it ended up being two ply. So all I had to do was pull apart the corner, and I went ahead and showed you, like, just pull it apart. It's two ply. It's super easy to do. And we're gonna use the center piece. And you get 36 napkins, by the way, for like four bucks. It, it was like a deal. And I loved this print and I thought everything lemons right now is totally like, oh my gosh, it's talking to my, to my heart so much right now. So I thought, why not? Let's go ahead and do this project. So it didn't quite fit the way that I wanted it to. So basically what I did is I lined it up with the top of the wreath and then I cut and just took that from the bottom and put it underneath. So I just took that center line, lined it up, cut the sides. Like I said, I'm gonna take the top part and piece it down below and fill in. So just line it up. You can eyeball it, you can measure if you want to. I'm pretty much a wing it kind of girl, so I just kind of go for it and dive right in and typically fix my problems later. But some people like to measure and make it all perfect, and that's okay too, so it's totally up to you. But I just went ahead and was like, you know what, we can make this work. 
So I just started chopping things off and was like, we got this. So once you get your little section done, you're gonna apply Mod Podge to this cutting board. And when you do, make sure you coat it really good because this is plastic. I did not sand it down. And for the most part, everything stuck perfectly. And I did not do a clear coat of Mod Podge over the napkins once I was done. I just basically used the Mod Podge to attach the napkins initially. So line it up and make sure it's really good. And don't go messing with it too much because what I've learned is that if you go rubbing your napkin, it'll tear. If you just pat it, it sticks pretty good and you can let it set. And then as you dry it, you can smooth out by patting some of the wrinkles and the bubbles. Just don't let it dry without making sure that you attach everything with the glue. All right, you're gonna dry this completely dry. And then I have this flexible sandpaper and I'll link it in the description below. I'm just going around the edges because it's setting inside the Dollar Tree cutting board and I didn't want it to go all the way to the edge. And then where that seam was, I just sanded it over it and it's kind of noticeable, but with this project, uh, as if you noticed from the preview, we're gonna cover this up a little bit, but I had some of the other wreath from the others beside it showing. So I decided to get some craft paint and lightly dust over the green that was showing and it completely hid that color coming through. So I didn't really have any issues and it kind of just shabbied it up a little bit, made it look a little bit more worn. But as you can see, it covered it really well. I And I just kind of dabbed it to kind of like blend it, but there you have it. So I also picked up these two boxes from the Dollar Tree and we're gonna stain them and I do use baby wipes and I try to dilute my paint with water and I make like a diluted mix so that I can kind of get a, like it's not like driftwood, but it's kind of like a wash. But I use these um, dishes from the Dollar Tree in the party uh, supply section. I dip the brush into the container and got some paint and mixed it with some water. Now, I did add a little bit of water and got it as thin as I could to make it to where it was kind of the consistency of stain. And I just brushed it on like you would stain. Now, this is a great trick that I like to use because I'm like, if I can use one product for multi-purposes, this girl's gonna do it. So I love to try to dilute my paint and then use it as a stain and the baby wipe helps kind of lighten up that color and it just turned out looking so cute and you're going to do the all the sides of every piece of these boxes who would have ever thought that it was just paint and not stain. It's such a fun little trick that I like to do. So, uh, completely finished doing both of these boxes. Okay, now we're going to do these lemons. So I picked up these lemon stickers and it was on an entire sheet at the Dollar Tree and I'm using some craft brushes for this project. I'm using some yellow paint, some black paint, and some white paint. And I know that lemons don't really have any black in them, but I really wanted it to pop so I am going to be using some black paint. So you're just going to basically coat your wood lemon stickers with one coat of yellow paint, dry them, make sure that they are dry. And then on to the next step, I'm using this fine point brush and I'm just kind of outlining and creating some dimension on the insides of the lemon. And you're gonna do that to all three of them. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, dry them. Make sure that they're completely dry because the black will go all kind of crazy. And then all I did was put a light coat of the yellow over the black and then make sure that they're dry. For the next step, there's a sticker sheet. It has pineapples, watermelons, lemons. And then I took some white paint and just went within the black outlines to kind of create like this ombre look for the inside of my lemons. And the next thing you're gonna do is sand them down and then make sure that they are good to go. And then we're going to go on to the next step. So I use these travel containers from the bath section of Dollar Tree and we're going to wrap them with our Dollar Tree jute cord or twine. Uh, it varies on the description sometimes, but I get it from the craft, crafter square. And I just wrapped it around about 12 times per bottle and then I just tied a bow. And then I made sure to knot it, then tie my bow because I didn't want it to come undone. And then I just slid it up part way so you could still see it. And we're gonna do this to all three of them. You're gonna get your box and you're gonna glue those lemons onto the front of the one of the boxes that you have stained with the paint. So you're gonna glue on the Dollar Tree magnets and I get them in a pack of like 12 and I wanted to, y'all, I wanted to make this universal, like, or versatile, so that you could change out your little box if you wanted to, but you don't have to. You completely just glue the box right on. And so I was like, no, we're gonna make this versatile. We're gonna put on the magnets, and then we're gonna do two different boxes. So this box has the lemons on the front, and I did use the wood squares from the crafter square to put feet on the bottom because I wanted it to be able to stand up or hang as well. And so I just added the square little feet to the bottom. And then when you glue this on, the jars on and you put the flowers in, it's not really that it's heavy. It's just, there's a little bit more weight to it, but this one stuck really good to the magnets. All I did was glue the magnets onto the box and then I held it up and marked it with a pen and then pulled the magnets off and then I made sure that I glued the right side of the magnet down because you could actually glue the wrong side down. Now I did cut that part out of the video but this one right here I'm gluing down, I actually glued the wrong way so I had to fix it. <laughs> so um, just a little secret that you could be a part of but I had to fix it. But here we go, we attach it on there and I marked the bottom so that I could glue the bottom magnet on. And you know, it's just so stinking cute. It gets even cuter, I tell ya. But I found these flowers at the Dollar Tree and I cut off three sprigs to put in the containers. And then, like I said, we're gonna glue them into the box and I'm telling you, I hope that you let me know in the comments if you love this as much as I do. Like, I just think this is my favorite project of all of these. And there are four projects, so there's gonna be another project after this one, but oh my gosh. It's so stinking cute. It's just different. And then um, what you could do is, because you have magnets on one side, you could actually finish the other side of this cutting board and it could be double-sided and you can stand it up and you can interchange it and you could put your salt and pepper and, and like condiments inside them and you could put them on your bar, in your kitchen, on a dining table, on a buffet. You could make it, put it on a coffee bar. It's going to be so precious, but my stinking goodness, I love these flowers. I loved how soft it was. I love that it just had a little bit of detail. It was a little bit you know, just kind of shabby, but kind of farmhouse. And then you can attach that one and it stands up by itself because we added the feet. And then I thought, why not take this up a notch and add on a buffalo check bow? Now, I'm not good at bow tying, so I just tied a knot and then 
basically tucked it in and then made a bow because I can never get my bows to set right. If y'all got some tips or tricks on bows, please let me know what they are because I struggle with a bow making. But this worked out just as well. So once I tied it in to the knot and flipped it under and glued it, I had my cute little tails and I was like, okay, we got this. And then I just basically cut a piece and looped it, glued it, and then made a bow. <laughs> I used some twine to create the center part of it and then it just kind of glued it on. But you guys, I also finished the other box and I think you're gonna be like, this is cute. I think you're gonna love it. But I ended up putting lemons in the other box that we did. And I got them at Hobby Lobby in the fruit section, like the like in the floral department. And I always get them when they're 50% off, which is I think at like every other week. So I think I ended up paying like three or four bucks for the whole bag of lemons. And it has the tinier ones and they fit perfect in my box. So I thought, you know what, let's go ahead and do the two boxes instead of just the one. And that way I could go ahead and show you what it actually looks like. So I had, like I said, I don't remember exactly how many lemons I had that I fit into here, but I put them into the box, added the magnets and added the feet and look at this. How precious is this? How cute. And my bow looks adorable. Y'all, I hope this is inspiring to you. I hope you love this as much as I did, but I am super proud of this one. I hope you loved it. Please let me know below, share this video, subscribe to my channel, and we're gonna move on to the very final DIY in this video. Okay, so I love these mirrors from the Dollar Tree. So stinking much. And in fact, I actually have done a couple of different projects with these mirrors because the frames are so fancy. Now they are kind of flimsy, so be very careful, but the frames are adorable. So we're going to basically use the glass, the mirror, and we're gonna trace out our scrapbook paper. And I did pick this up at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. I think it's the paper studio. Yeah, it's paper studio. So I picked it up at Hobby Lobby. And I always get my scrapbook paper when it's on sale, like four for a dollar. And I always stash it. I loved this black and white polka dot. It's got the tiny polka dots. And I thought, you know what? We're going to cover up this mirror <laughs> with this scrapbook paper. So this is just going to be a super simple, easy to do DIY. Now, the Mod Podge did want to kind of lift up and not bond as well. But in the end, when I got done applying it, it actually stuck pretty good. So I, again, just pat it down and I use my rolling pin trick to help smooth out the paper and push out any of the excess glue. And then make sure that you use the low temp on this glass mirror because you can crack it with the heat and I learned my lesson from the last time. So I picked up these ornate frames at, well, inner frames, scrolls. At, Ho at Hobby Lobby and they were a dollar. And so I'm just gonna stain this with some Dixie Bells in the navy, which navy is my power color in my bedroom. I have a whole accent wall painted navy. In fact, it's almost exactly this color. So I like to use a baby wipe to paint a lot of times. Um, by the way, I'm a former furniture painter, so I have about eight years of professional faux painting experience. So I've learned all the tricks of painting. And so I learned you can paint with baby wipes and create different finishes, but it saves a brush too sometimes. So I just used my finger and a wet baby wipe to paint. And then I did one coat and then I just sanded it down. And then I found this bike. It's super cute at the Hobby Lobby. And it was, I think 99 cents as well. And I'm using some metallic spray paint from Rustoleum. And I am again doing this indoors. I did have a fan on. Um, if you can spray paint outside, I do highly recommend that you do. And then use your heat gun on low setting. I will give a forewarning that if you use a high 
temperature heat gun, please don't use it with spray paint because it can ignite the fumes and I would hate for there to be a fire. So use um, a hair dryer or something that's not going to ignite. And then once it was dry, I just went over it with some black craft paint to kind of shabby up into the grooves of the wood and it just made it look more galvanized. Like it just, it wasn't so like reflective, it looked textured. And then I am taking some of this folk art home decor chalk paint in the lid and I'm just gonna shabby up over this scrapbook paper. I just wanted it to look more old and more vintage and go more with my style than just being very clean. And so just dry brush over it, make sure it's dry. And then the next thing we're gonna do is slide this into our frame. We're gonna put our back on that does have the easel part of it because we're I'm actually gonna be using this with the easel. It's gonna not be hanging. It's gonna actually sit on a shelf. And then slide your back in. And just be very careful not to break your mirror. And now you have your frame. So I'm gonna hot glue this wood scroll from the Hobby Lobby just right over our Dollar Tree frame. And then we're gonna glue our bike right inside. How simple, but yet so cute is this? It's just, there's four different projects right here in this video that are affordable, cute, everyday decor. You can change up your colors. You can substitute where you like. You can use different scrapbook paper. But you guys, I hope you are inspired. I hope you've loved all of these. I really hope that you subscribe to my channel. You turn on that bell. You come back for more. There is so much more to come. I do actually do Facebook Live videos on my page. Uh, most like at least three or four days a week and we have a huge community over there of around 88,000 people and they love to craft they're the crafty crew with me and I would love for you to come over there and join us as well as YouTube but thank you so much for watching I hope that you have enjoyed this that you're inspired give me a thumbs up share this video turn on the bell leave me a comment and here is what it looks like all staged together I hope that you're inspired. I will see you on the next video.